SRAM has just released the latest version of their second tier road group set, Force Axis. The 12 speed wireless group set has seen a number of changes, which we will get into. And I've also been lucky enough to have ridden the new shiny bit, so stay tuned to hear about the good and the not so good. Let's start off with one of the most obvious changes from the last iteration of Force, and that, that's the new look of it. Firstly, the chain rings. To my eye, these are a huge step forwards in terms of aesthetics. They obviously mimic the same design language that is found on the range topping red, but with slightly less bling. The glossy black finish of the chain set is very clean and now looks like one in a set. The move to these new chain rings has also saved a decent chunk of weight off of the group set, but we'll get into that a little bit later. You'll also notice the silvery, rainbow-esque stickers that now appear on most of the components. Now, while these aren't practical, I guess they do look pretty cool. Another aesthetic change, which does double as a practical one, is the shape of the new lever hoods. Not only are they longer, providing more space for your fingers behind the brake lever, but they also have bigger shift paddles. The tops of the hoods have also shrunk and mirror the same design as used on SRAM's third tier level group set, Rival. Now, I will say it is pretty rare to have trickle up technology, but in this case, it was the right call. In terms of looks, that's about it. But it doesn't matter if something just looks good, it also has to work well. So what has been done to improve user interaction? Well, as mentioned, the hoods have changed shape to improve ergonomics. The extra space does mean that when you're gripping the hoods in the normal riding position, they feel incredibly comfortable. I've also not got the largest hand, so I imagine for those that do, this will be a very welcome improvement. The shrinking of the reservoirs should also, in theory, make the tops easier and more comfortable to cup when riding aggressively. The new force axis can be paired with up to six blip shifters, or better put, three sets of shifters. And these are all wireless and can be programmed via the SRAM app. Now the cool thing is, because they're wireless, you can basically put them wherever you like. So if you wanted to put a shifter on one of your bottles, in theory, you could definitely do that. I only have one set attached to my bike and I had them positioned either side of the stem, or better described as in the climbing position. And I used them quite a lot. Going up and down the cassette was nice and easy and smooth. And when you press both at the same time, I had them programmed to switch chain rings. And quite frankly, they were faultless. The group set is now around 100 grams lighter compared to the old version, but this does vary depending on which setup you go for. Of course, most of this weight saving does come from those new integrated chain rings, which have come down from red. There is also only one rear derailleur, which is built to work with all cassette sizes up to 36 teeth. If you want to go bigger, then you can opt for the Explore rear derailleur, which can go up to 44 teeth, but that is for one by drivetrains only. In terms of actual improvements, this is where things start to run a little dry. When you look past the new chain set, the shifters, the fresh glossy black finish and shiny stickers, there doesn't seem to be a great deal more. Given the lack of any considerable steps forwards in terms of functionality, the points of comparison between the old and the new group set are fairly far and few between. The biggest step forwards, of course, is that new chain set, but Let's dive into why that might not be the best thing. I'm sure the vast majority of you will agree that it does look better. However, the cost of those aesthetic improvements may have meant practicality has suffered. We all know that chain rings are a wearable part, and after a certain amount of mileage, they will need replacing. Given the new one-piece nature of the rings, when you change one, you now have to change both. Much like how you have to do on SRAM Red. That's nothing new. Of course, it is slightly annoying, especially if you'd only worn down one of them and you still had a bit of life left in the other that you thought you could extrapolate. You're now forced into replacing both at the same time. The real kicker here though, is that if you have the power meter version of the chain set, much like the one I have here, the power meter itself is built into the rings. SRAM say this is for maximum weight reductions and increased power accuracy. This then means, if you need to change your chain rings, you also 
need to buy a new power meter and simply throw the old one away. To me, that doesn't sit so well, and rightly or wrongly, puts a serious onus on the rider to religiously clean and replace their chain to ensure maximum life out of their rings. SRAM say that these rings are made for extreme longevity, and with the care and attention I've already mentioned, you should get a lot of life out of them. They also say that the chain should be replaced at 0.8 millimeters of wear, which quite frankly, isn't a lot. So be ready to get through a serious number of chains. I will be the first to say that staying on top of your cleaning and maintenance is absolutely critical to getting the most life out of your bike and your components. However, now it feels like the stakes and risks associated in not doing so have been disproportionately heightened. While this new chain set does look seriously cool, and in my opinion has definitely boosted the curb appeal of the new Force group set, it does seem like it's going to generate a fair bit of wastage. Not only in riders throwing away chain rings which have valuable quark power meters attached, but also in the sheer amount of chains that one would end up getting through. It would have been great to see SRAM launch a recycling service where rather than throwing your old chain rings away, they can remove and recycle the power meters and also recycle the rings as well. Waste, of course, has its own impact, but there's also the immediate cost to us, the riders, which does mean that servicing the group set is more inflated than that of Ultegra and other competing group sets in the space. I mentioned at the start of the video that I had been lucky enough to have ridden the new Force, and there are a lot of things to like. I think this is because the old Force was already a really good group set, so SRAM was starting from a really good place. The brakes also feel good and powerful. Again, they never felt bad before. The rear shifting is a delight. It's smooth, crisp, silent, and doesn't falter when making strange shifts under load. During my first ride with the group set, I did actually crash when I hit some oil on a corner and I ended up coming down on the drive side. Now, while the rear derailleur did take an impact, it's still working seamlessly and shifting as well as it did before. And lastly, I do like the slightly larger shift paddles. You aren't left searching for them and the small bits of texture really add to the interaction with them. But now onto some of the things that maybe aren't so great. While the hood shape is an improvement and I like being able to get my hands behind the levers more comfortably, the reservoirs, which have been shrunk down to allow better grip, do slightly limit the number of positions that you can adopt. They force you into holding the tops of the hoods like this when riding aggressively, but it's not quite as comfortable to cup them like this. Yes, I know it's a tiny problem to have, but when you think about the shape of the Shimano Ultegra hoods, you aren't limited at all. Also, when you are holding the forces like this, it's a real shame that they don't have the shifter buttons on the tops of the reservoirs, allowing you to fine tune your gears when you're tucking up into the most aero position. On the same tangent as shifting, the front mech is still one of the biggest weak points of the force group set. It's just not as fast as Shimano. You have to take a more considered approach when you shift. I will say, it never shuddered or struggled to shift when I wanted it to, even under load. I never dropped a chain or heard any crunching or graunching of any kind, but it's just not as fast as what I've become accustomed to from Shimano. Like I've already mentioned, the situation with the chain rings is a tough one to navigate. It really is a case of performance versus practicality. And while this setup isn't new, as this is how things have been done on SRAM RED for a while, I believe that a RED customer would lean in the favour of performance over cost, given the fact that they've opted for a range topping group set. However, since Force is a product for a much wider market and arguably is a market that wants red performance but doesn't want to pay as much for it, perhaps this move by SRAM may not sit so well with that customer base. Let's just hope that they don't do the same for Rival when its time comes for an update. Finally, on to pricing, and this is where things get really, really interesting. It's almost as though SRAM knew I wouldn't be too happy about the cost of running the group set, and then compensated for that in the purchase price. Because ladies and gents, for a two by non-power meter group set, the list price here in the UK is £1,751 or $2,115 
over in the USA. Now, I will tell you why that is significant, and that's because Shimano 105 Di2 costs £1,730 or $1,890. It's remarkable that a second tier group set can come in only £21 more expensive than the like for like third tier equivalent from Shimano. This really is a rather large statement to make, but don't get too excited. I even said when I reviewed Shimano 105 Di2 that I thought it was on the expensive side. And when you look at the price in the US, the gap does stretch out to $200. Now, this could be down to the pound regaining some strength, but whatever the cause, if you are a customer looking to purchase a new group set by itself, then SRAM has made the decision just that little bit more complicated. Of course, the majority of people don't upgrade the group set on their current bike, but they do, however, choose their next bike based on what group set it comes with. So, will manufacturers be pitching their new SRAM Force bikes at similar money to those with 105Di2? Probably not. They won't want to confuse their own pricing structures. The new SRAM Force is certainly a facelift group set and not something that's drastically new. It does address some key sticking points of the previous generation, and while performance has been prioritised, practicality has suffered. Upgrading your bike to this group set doesn't make a great deal of sense, unless you were considering upgrading to Shimano 105 Di2. For anyone who does choose a new bike with this group set fitted, just be aware of the associated costs in running it. The price in which forces enter the arena doesn't represent value when you consider the commitment a consumer has to make when it comes to replacing chain rings and chains. And there isn't a tangible improvement in front mech shifting. Sure, it does look very cool, but the shifting just doesn't feel as fast as Ultegra or even 105 Di2. While the fewer customers for Red may be more agreeable to dealing with those servicing costs of running a top-level group set, the larger base of force might not. What do you think of the new Force group set? Is it something you could foresee yourself running in the future? Or do you think that actually it is a group set that you would like to upgrade to? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you again very soon.